So that was Lesión number one by Antonio Cano. And we'll have a lesson on this piece, but feel free to download the free PDF sheet music. Um, there's no sign up or anything like that. You just follow the link in the description and download the PDF for free. So this is a beginner level piece and I'm, I'm putting together a collection of kind of relatively easy pieces as a supplement for my volume one and volume two method books. So I would place this piece um, for the student who is either at the end of my volume one method book or has started my volume two method book. I think it's it's right around that level. I might even even include it as a final piece in my first method book in a future edition. I really like teaching these styles of pieces to beginner students. This piece in particular is really great for beginner students because there's nothing complicated about it. I'm not saying that it's easy for beginners, but what I'm saying is there's no awkward fingerings, there's no um, oddities of any kind. Everything is very straightforward, um, so the student just needs to focus on good rhythm and good technique and good musicality and phrasing, and that's it. That's their only task, is to be a really good musician. The music um, should allow them to do that. So it's a re I like teaching straightforward pieces because it really it puts the emphasis on on good musical playing and technique for the student. So in this piece we have a, a bass line with the thumb and then a, a melody with our fingers. And there's nothing there's nothing too much to talk about. Um, in terms of the right hand fingering, we're generally playing all those bass notes with our thumb, and then we're alternating I and M for the melody. So when we start off, I am 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 I I am I. So in general, you can you alternate those fingers. After your thumb note, you can either start with I or switch to M. Now, I'm generally doing I, M, I, thumb, M, I, M. But it, as long as you're alternating your fingers, it's fine. After the thumb note, that's another, that's another fingers and that, that's an alternation. So you, you just want to make sure that you're always alternating. And then I've listed some, right, some right-hand fingering a few places in the score where I think you should follow my suggestions in those particular spots. So at the end of the first line, M, I, M, P. For, the, for those last two measures there, it makes sense to use M on the upper note and I on the, that lower melodic note. And on the second half, there's just one tiny spot to talk about in terms of right hand fingering. I want you to use your I finger on the fourth string there because it's part of the upper voice and we're kind of keeping it regulated. The, the bass voice is being played with the thumb and the upper voice with I and M. So we will use our I finger on that E there. And that's about it. Very straightforward right hand fingering. You're just alternating as much as possible. In terms of the left hand fingering, also very, very straightforward. Nothing out of the ordinary. Of course, in my method book, I'm using the fourth finger on the Ds. So make sure you do that and you're just keeping a nice aligned hand there. So let's just do a quick walk through the piece. There's not much else to discuss though, but in terms of musicality, you want it to be very legato, so very smooth and connected. And you just want to glide through these phrases and you want a little bit of growth. So a little bit of growth. And you can 
let it kind of back away on the second uh, bar there. So back away, growth, back away a little bit. Let it grow, cadence. So that cadence at the end there kind of closes the, the phrases, right? For measure nine, I generally just keep this a little bit softer. And then you start with your growth again. And on the second time through, you should do a little bit of a writ at ritardando at the end. So as you approach it, slowing down to One other thing I'll mention about the phrasing is that when you have those bass notes at the end, at the end of measure eight and, the, and, the, and at the end of the piece, uh, make sure you play that final bass note quite soft. You know, when you're looking at measure seven and eight, that's your final note. This is just an afterthought bass note. So be, be very aware, sometimes students will go, you know, they'll really punch out that final note just because it's the final note and they're just, they're so excited about playing it correctly. Um, but let's keep that thumb at the end very soft because the piece is over at that point. Here, soft. Same thing at the end. very end, I'll recommend that beginner students place your thumb on the sixth string to stop that sixth string from ringing. Don't worry about it in the rest of the piece. Um, muting um, is not for the beginner student, but at the very end of the piece, after playing your fifth string, just put your thumb on the sixth string to stop the, it from sounding. And then cut. So yeah, very straightforward piece, straightforward fingering, uh, but whenever you have a piece like that, the emphasis, you know, definitely is on the student playing with good posture, good guitar position, good hand positions, um, playing nice and legato with good phrasing, and um, some of those phrasing ideas we discussed, and just generally uh, good musicality, because it's, it's really great when I see a beginner student playing like a good musician, their music might be relatively easy, but they are playing like a good musician. I think that's just really important because as you progress to harder pieces, you want to keep that good musicianship and just let that grow. So you're a good musician when you begin. The pieces get harder, but you just maintain that, that, um, that good musicality.